Today we're going to be looking at this, the Anker Make M5C, which could be the best reason you've ever had to get into 3D printing. Because this promises to be the best hands-off printer available for beginners, whilst also bringing some pretty revolutionary tech to the industry. Now just before we get into the full video for this thing, and for full transparency, Anker Make did send us this printer to test out, but that's as far as it goes. They didn't give us any obligations other than, and I quote, please take the M5C to do whatever you want with. So that's what we're going to do. But before we get to that, if you've ever bought from Anker before, you'll know that things are pretty classy there. And the 3D printing division Anker Make is no different. Everything is really professionally packaged and the little touches like this toolkit are way beyond the usual plastic bag with a pair of cutters in you get with other 3D printing companies. The M5C comes in two very sturdy aluminium covered parts, a top and a bottom, which just slot into each other with four screws on each side to do up underneath and then clip this cover on. The only other bits to do are to pop this cable into here, attach a spool holder and you're away. That assembly in real time took me about 10 minutes, which is by far the quickest and simplest assembly I've ever done on a printer. Once you plug the M5C in, the first thing you'll probably go to do is use the screw. Uh, where's the screen gone? Yeah, there is no screen on the M5C, which is a pretty ballsy move for a 3D printer, but I'll get onto why I think that's a good thing in a minute. So this lack of a screen does mean before you start printing you need to download the Anker Make app on your phone, sign up, then you have full control at your fingertips. And the first thing to do is load some filament up, which this PLA Plus came with it, and hit the auto leveling in the app, which then uses 49 points on the bed to make sure it's nice and level. And that was all the calibration that was needed, which I was a little bit concerned about because every printer I've used before has a ton more calibration to do out the box than that. But after a couple of prints, that concern was quickly taken care of because these were some of the best finishes I'd ever had out the box on any printer, let alone one in the lowest price bracket. So I then obviously went straight to the other extreme and printed this glorious nine hour castle design from the apps explore tab to really give it a test. And I mean, look at it. The detail is just unbelievable. And as I said, this is on a sub $400 printer. I even went on to make a couple of our latest life hack designs out of PTG and TPU to test the all metal hot end and the direct drive, which both came out great too. And if you really did want to try and tackle materials like ABS, then the hot end does reach 300 degrees and there's a profile in the slicer for it. But if you want to try and do that without an enclosure, then best of luck to you. I carried on printing loads of random models over the next couple of weeks and each one came out as good as the last. And a lot of these were printed on Anker Makes Fast Mode, which utilizes the printer's 500 millimeters per second print speed. So this phone hold, for example, only took 56 minutes to print and it came out fantastic. Now, if we stop there a minute, I'm a big believer in balance. And so far, I've been pretty excitable about the M5C, which I think, frankly, is justified. But let's try and do a little bit of nitpicking. I did try to print some dual color PLA on this thing and it did clog up twice to the point where I actually had to completely disassemble the hot end, which wasn't the easiest, and physically drill the clog out. However, the filament I bought was on the cheaper side and it was extremely soft, and I've had no issues with my usual go-to Eason PLA Plus since. This slicer, on the other hand, is probably my least favorite thing about the Anker Make. The slicing time is fairly slow and the whole thing feels really clunky and restricted, especially compared to others like Prusa Slicer and Orca. And other than starting a print, you can't actually control the printer directly from it. But then I'm looking at this as someone who's experienced in 3D printing and likes to play around with the slicer settings. If you're a beginner, this probably won't be an issue and it might actually be a good thing because you can get into all sorts of problems messing around with settings before you really know what you're doing. And to be fair to them, Anker Make seem to have nailed the settings for the 0.4 and 0.2 mil nozzles anyway. That lack of control in the slicer, however, does bring us nicely back round to the massive gamble Anker Make have taken by getting rid of the pretty fantastic screen that is on its big brother, the M5. And instead, opting to control the M5C pretty much exclusively from this app, which I love because it is everything I ever wanted from a 3D printing app and it is insanely easy to use. When you open it, you'll land on a printer information screen, which gives you the printer status, nozzle and bed temperatures, controls to load and unload filaments, move the head and bed around, and well, pretty much anything you could ever need to do. 
Then there's the Explore tab, which has a whole host of models like the ones I printed earlier, that are pre-sliced and ready to just hit print on. It's as easy as that. And all this is insanely well planned out and smooth to use, and I've currently had no glitches or bugs on it. However, controlling this printer from the app has been criticised by some people, like what if you don't have your phone with you, or what if the app goes down? Well, to be honest, I think these are pretty small issues in reality. Like, if you want to use your car, you take your car keys with you. Besides, people can't get off their phone these days, let alone not have it with them. And yes, if this app goes down, it might be a little bit inconvenient. But this is realistically no different a problem compared to other printer companies' cloud servers going down. Because you can still print by putting a USB stick in the side here, and hitting the big play button on top will print the latest file. The only caveat is that if the app was down, you wouldn't be able to change your filament out so you're stuck with whatever's loaded in last time. So, if you're watching Anchor Make, adding a custom option to that big play button to load or unload filament would completely solve that issue as well. And I'm even going to be a little bit sincere here, whether you like the no screen option or not, I really admire Anchor Make for taking that gamble and really committing to driving that app technology forward. Because that is the way the world is going, and by them taking that gamble it will force other 3D printer companies to follow suit. Which means the 3D printing industry will be at the cutting edge of that technology rather than trying to play catch up later. Much like Bamboo Lab changed the industry with their X1 Carbon. So they really have done everyone a favour here even if you don't like the no screen option. Now before we give our final verdict, I want to take you back to the beginning, where Ankermate said we could do whatever we want with this thing. Which is why I'm outside in some surprisingly nice British weather, because whilst the M5C packs a punch, it's also pretty compact. Which means it shouldn't only be perfect for beginners, but also if you want to take your printer out and about, to make affairs or shows, it should also be pretty perfect, right? Well, that was my big plan anyway. I managed to set the whole printer up, load the filament in and auto level it all without having Wi-Fi because it connects to my phone via Bluetooth as well. But for some reason I couldn't send anything from the Explore tab to the printer, even though my phone had internet. Which may have been a bit short-sighted of me because I kind of just assumed I'd be able to do that. However, I did go ahead and buy myself a USB-C stick the next day, knocked off the internet in my studio, and the app does allow you to browse the USB files, select which pre-sliced file you want to print, all with no internet. So ultimately, the M5C would be perfect as a portable machine to take to shows, but just remember to get one of these USB-C sticks, so you can pre-slice your files and load whatever you want, otherwise you'll end up getting caught short like I did. So what do I think of this thing? Well, ultimately I think Anchor Make absolutely nailed a couple of categories with the M5C. If I was a beginner looking for hands-off, hassle-free 3D printing, or maybe a crafty person that needs the occasional print for their business with no faff, then I would happily give Anchor Make my money for the user experience and just overall general quality of this printer. And yes, there will always be some annoying little issues on a printer in this price bracket. I mean, even on a printer in a higher price bracket, there are still annoying issues. But as a complete all-rounder, I think you would do well to get anything better than the M5C for sub $400. Thanks for watching, and if you got anything at all from the video today, please subscribe.